it was quite emotional for me. One of my technicians came to my office and showed me the first clue. Our groups worked furiously hard starting in 1987. But we knew there was something very exciting coming because we were asked as a clinic nurses to help draw blood from families. And it was a, a small change in the, in the patient's uh, DNA. And uh, it was a, a change not so obvious to a lot of people. So I was skeptical myself. You know, I was willing to give up uh, my cautious skepticism and say, I think this is it. I wanted to scream, yell, and cheer, but you know, we're in a dorm and there are other people nearby. So even though that was the most important piece of uh, evidence at that time, so we still had to work a long way uh, to prove that change was actually causing cystic fibrosis. And of course, we wanted to keep this as much under wraps as possible because there was a lot riding on this and the press was very interested in any rumors that maybe this gene had finally been found. It was interesting because as a clinical team, I'm not sure how much I knew what was going on other than there was a lot of excitement happening. We could not celebrate because we did not have all the evidence, all the support we needed at that time. So it took us uh, quite some time to go from that moment to submitting the paper uh, or the, the papers uh, to the science, the magazine that eventually published our results. But somebody got word of the fact that maybe something was going on and a reporter called my laboratory <laughs> and spoke to a graduate student and said to the graduate student, so I have heard it under uh, absolute confident report that the Collins and Choi labs have found the cystic fibrosis gene. Would you like to comment? And the graduate student stammered and stuttered and didn't deny it. <laughs> and that was enough. And I remember them saying that we were going to go and listen to an announcement. And we were all um, in a very small uh, room in a old part of the hospital. I remember it very clearly. And Dr. Reardon and Lap Chi and Francis Collins at the front with their jeans on and looking a little more tired than they probably had been celebrating a bit before that. So ultimately, even though the paper wasn't published till the first week in September, we had to tell the story on August 25th because the word was out. And that was a wild day. We had a press conference in Toronto, in the auditorium of the Hospital for Sick Kids, with patients and caregivers and researchers all there. It was electrifying. And then we jumped on a plane and came to Washington to the National Press Club and did another press conference uh, to tell the story again. Uh, what a day, what a moment, what a sense of having passed through a bottleneck and into new territory. Sparks will happen when you run into people in the corridor, talk about your so-called crazy ideas, but the crazy ideas are what makes scientists propel and, and then move on uh, to find more new things.